live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tell the Lion with me, George Glinsky. Joined today by Luke Nevin, who fights Aaron McCallum at BKB25 on the 10th of April. Luke, how are we doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Very well. Very well, indeed. Listen, Luke, <laughs> a lot of hype. A lot of hype. We were just talking about it off camera. Your social media is blowing up. When you were signed with BKB, I've, I've not seen a response like that. Um, for a very long time outside of the guys that have come from the UFC and so on and so forth so so where's that hype come from like you're a very popular guy um where's this hype coming from yeah I don't I don't know you know I didn't realize that many people like this <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know no I, I'm blown away myself by the level of support uh, that, that I've um that I've been given um and the the people that are, are following us to london i'm just totally overwhelmed with it all yeah it's, it's absolutely brilliant the only thing i can think is obviously it's just a local person trying to you know do well and i think i think yeah it's just yeah i'm blown away by the support yeah <laughs> i mean you've you've come from an incredible story um how did you start in combat sports? Because obviously I understand you're in the military, you've you've lived quite the life, but where did you start off boxing? Yeah, so initially, uh, I'd done little bits before I joined the army, nothing, nothing serious. Um, joined the army, and I was always getting in trouble in the army. I was just a, you know, a little shit. Um, always getting involved in, in fighting and stuff like that. And um, yeah, just I ended up, got the opportunity. The, the battalion started a boxing team. And I start, I start really took myself into it and just, yeah, loved it from the start. Um gelled with the people that was there and you know quickly fired towards fighting um you know it was quite a quick transition from not boxing to to really wanting to fight and when I did fight I realized that it was just you know I, I just loved it loved everything about it I love the lifestyle like the lifestyle of building up to it you know the the, the physical the, the mental state I'm in you know you've got to be so mentally robust so physically robust and I just liked everything that it gives us, as well as keeping us on the straight and narrow at the time. Was, uh, yeah, so it served a really big purpose, I suppose, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And I mean, we, we spoke again, um, a lot of military guys that I speak to that come out of uh, the military and into civilian life, it's a, it's a difficult adjustment, isn't it? Obviously, you've, you've lived a certain way of living. You, you've had a certain structure in your life which is all of a sudden broken once you come out of the military and a lot of guys go on a, a downward spiral so was combat sports that sort of therapy for you that that way of dealing with that adjustment um yeah i mean yeah sir, certainly it helped that i've always had that to go back to you know i'm, I'm lucky enough that i've done it in the army um, and for all, you you know, you might or might not know that my life took a, a massive downward spiral, mine, from leaving the army. Um, but I was lucky that when I regained control of my life that I could go back to contact sports, yeah, to combat sports, it give us a purpose, you know, and it's something I, I pride myself on. I think I'm really good at, you know, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a big heart for it. Um, you know, I, I'm very passionate about fighting. I'm, there's, there's something about it that just lights us up inside. Um, I feel like I really excel there, you know, maybe not academically a kind of guy, but, you know, when it, when it comes to that sort of um, part of my life, I've always seemed to excel, excel, sorry, um, and kind of just, you know, throw myself into it. Um, so, yeah, I really do, do enjoy it. And you speak about that downward spiral. We saw a picture on your Instagram recently, a massive physical transformation in the space of two years. You've, you've said yourself, you've, you've suffered um, with that transition and with substance abuse. So can you talk to me a little bit about that and how you've got yourself into such tremendous shape? Yeah, so uh, um, most people probably know as well. So upon leaving the army, um, I got involved in certain things, uh, went down the wrong way. Um you know, with that come, I was exposed to drugs and alcohol quite quite frequently. Um, you know, but I've I've always I've always indulged in in alcohol more than what I should have, um, and particularly substances, um, cocaine to be the precise one. Mm. You know, I I used substances and drank in the army, um, but with it being part of the culture, it was always quite um. 
well, what's the word? It was it was it was not not frowned upon, but I had a structure around us that kind of allowed us and picked us up every time. Yeah. Um, but when I left the army, you know, I it's when my life just spiraled out of control. My drinking and my drug use become more and more to the point where I was alcohol and drug dependent. Um, you know, I, I sniffed cocaine and used substances pretty much every day of my life for about two years. Um, it was a miserable, horrible part of my life. I lost everything, family included. Um, and my mental health suffered. Yeah, I was just like a shell of a person. Um, just stripped us of everything and, you know, took us to my knees and brought us to not, not a good place. Um, I managed to get myself into, into rehab, um, which gave us a foot in the door for a recovery. Um I spent three months in the rehab, um, Tom Allison House, it's for ex-service, ex-service people and it's a great foundation. Yeah, they got us off clean drinking drugs and I come out, uh, come out of there, thought I could do it all on my own again. Uh, went back up home and I ended up um, relapsing and being back on drugs and alcohol again. This time it took a turn for the worst. Um, yeah, my mental health battered. Um, try to take my own life. Try, I just was really, really just not in a, in a good place. Just totally defeat by it all, defeated by it all. Tried to make a comeback to boxing, just couldn't do it because my, my body just wouldn't. I wasn't in a physical condition to do it, let alone the mental condition to do it. Um, I knew I needed to make a, a drastic change because what was left of me mental health and what was left of me physical health, there wasn't much left of it. You know, it was touch and go whether, you know, I was probably going to live or die. That's the severity that that I was dealing with because of the severity of me drug and drink use was horrendous. Um, took over my life. So I had to do something quite severe and I chose to move away from my hometown, uh, give myself a fresh start, which has worked out to be the best thing I've ever done. And it's nothing against the people up there or, or my family or anything, because, you know, quite frankly, a lot of people did try to help me, but, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, unfortunately. I just couldn't change in then surroundings. There was too much influence, too much, maybe too much pressure. Um, I come I come down to where I live now, um, and I fully chucked myself into a new way of life. Mm. Um, I give up everything. And everyone just just needed to just solely focus on myself. And, you know, today and now, you know, a year on, I don't drink or use drugs. Um, you know, I run, I run my own non-profit organisation, which helps um, so uh, soldiers that have got mental health problems. I also help people with drug and alcohol issues. Um, myself, as well as, you know, I've, I've got my own fighting career back now. I'm looking to make my professional debut on BKB 25, which I can't wait for. You know, everything that I've struggled for, you know, has led us up to here now. So I don't regret anything. You know, I certainly don't regret it. Maybe it drives us more than anything, if anything. You know, I've, I'm certainly not scared to jump in with anyone. You know, I've faced and come overcome battles that no one can even, you know, comprehend. So jumping in a ring with someone doesn't really seem that daunting anymore. You know, it's something that I enjoy. It's something that I can't wait to do. You know, and I'm lucky I've been given the chance on this platform to you know, excel and take that next step up, which I have done. Mm. Yeah, so looking forward to it. Uh, can't wait. <laughs> is, is that the goal, ultimately? Obviously, you speak about your charity, um, Hard Hitters, and, and, and the work you're doing. Is, is that the goal, ultimately, to, to inspire people, to show people that despite um, substance abuse and, and adversity, you can become, you know, a, a fantastic athlete and, and really inspire other people to, to do the same? Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, like I was in a place for so long where I just thought there's no way out, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm getting on a bit, like I'm 26, but I always thought my life was over at 24 because, yeah. you know, I thought I was an old man because my body was going to give up, but the reality is you're never too old to change, you know, and what, what I've realised is, you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight changing, it doesn't happen overnight, you know, and I'm still I'm still changing now, still adapting, you, you know, but it's easier because I don't use substances, so I'm aware of myself a lot more. And I don't put an, a massive amount of stress on myself anymore, you know. I know I want to fight, and, and, I, can, and I can do that now, and anybody else can do that. It's never too late to, 
to change. And like you say, yeah, it, it's nice to just, you know, to say this is who I am. I've overcome it. You know, I'm no longer, you know, for a long time I was ashamed of me past me. Uh, and I would be ashamed in public about me past. I wouldn't talk about it. But but really, like, you know, like a, a good friend and a wise friend of mine, you know, told me that my past would become my greatest asset. And it has. Um, you know, I help a lot more people than what I've harmed in the past. And for that, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a massive achievement in my eyes. And I, I continue to strive to do that today and to be the best version of myself. Mm. So the fighting is for me. You know, the fighting is something that I'll do for me. But as well as something, you know, that I do believe can, you know, spur on a few people that might be going down a shit time. You know, I, I've been to the worst places possible. Do you know what I mean? In, in my head, uh, in my body, and to come back from come back from that, anybody can come back from anything. In, in, in my eyes, you know, not never be defeated. You know, there's all, there's definitely always a way out. Definitely. And at 26 years old, there's going to be questions. Why didn't you go down the, the professional boxing route? Why didn't you try this? Why didn't you try that? Why did you decide for bare boxing? Obviously, you've been through a lot of adversity. You're a tough guy, a former military man. So it's, it's sort of in your genetic makeup, if you like. But why specifically did you choose bare boxing as your sport of choice? Yeah, um, I just love it, you know. I just think it's so pure and just so... Like this, like just unarmed, you know, combat man on man. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just a hundred percent in there. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like there's no bad feelings for me before or after a fight. Do you, do you know what I mean? I'm there to do a job. Do you know what I mean? I, I respect anyone that's in there and anyone I'm going to get in with. I'm going to demolish everyone, but I don't. But you, I make no bones about that. Anyone that steps in my way is getting absolutely demolished. But before, I, I like I wish everyone good health. Um. Before and after it, and I admire anyone that that jumps in there. And I just think there's a real respect thing with the bare knuckle. Um, yeah, there's just a real, real, you know, you know, like appreciation, man on man. You know, I could, you can happily shake someone's hand, um, in there and just know that they're a true, true gentleman just for even getting in there. Uh, and boxing, yeah, I, I still love glove boxing. It's just. You know, my life's seen me go down this way and I wouldn't change it for, for the world. It excites us, you know. Like, I get a buzz off us. It's, it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, you two know in the uh, in UBKB beforehand, you beat Jay Eggleston and, and Harry Dobson. Of Jay Eggleston, a lot of people will know he was on the uh, BKB lockdown card for Craig Morgan. He's, a, he's a, a long-time veteran of the sport. So you're not just your average debutant. You have got experience, but... Why did you specifically choose to come to BKB Trademark? What was it about this company that really appealed to you? The professionalism of the fighters. It's that step up. Um, no doubt about it. You want to be the best, you've got to fight the best. Um, in my eyes, you, you know, and, and I've never been scared of shying away from a challenge. Um, and I do believe, like, this time round, you know, I've, I've come back from some pretty dark places and I think... You know what's the next biggest test, and I think that's obviously my fighting career. Um, so yeah, I've just took that step up. I'm looking forward to to building it up, and you know, one day becoming a champion in the sport. I've got no doubt that I will do. Um, like I say, I believe in myself, believe in the team that I've got behind us. Yeah, I'm just well excited to get going, mate. I can't, I can't, I can't wait for it, bro. <laughs> and 10th of April, obviously fighting Aaron McCallum. What do you know about Aaron? Obviously, he defeated. Johnny Lawson in his last last fight, the last, well, the first actually, sorry, the first man to finish Johnny Lawson. So he's got a bit of hype surrounding him. What do you know about Aaron McCullum? Nothing, and I don't really care. He's getting knocked out. That's simple as that. Um, I, I don't, I don't. I Jim messages with a name. I said yes. That's as far. That's a, that's. A, <coughs> yeah, I'm. I'm you know, I'll keep my end up. He keeps, you know, I'll turn up as best I can on the day. He'll turn up the best he can on the day. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, don't know an awful lot. Don't, don't really choose to to look into that sort of thing. Doesn't, doesn't do now for us. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard that he's come off the back of a win, which is obviously he's going, he's going to be, you know, up there hyped up for it. So, but no one's as hyped up as what I am. So. <laughs> Is that, is that always the case? You, you never watch film on your opponents? 
Not really. No, I just I, I've got no. I, it doesn't doesn't interest us. Um, I just think you get caught up on that sort of shit, don't you? Just like what you know, becomes more about what they're doing than what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? So, what, what you know, I, I've got. I'm not asked me. Like I know I'm I'm putting a hundred percent in me. So that's enough for me to know. Do you know what I mean? And we'll see what happens on on the on the on the day. Well, I know what happens, but do you, do you know it's. It, I think you can get too too fix fixated on what other people are doing, um, and it can bring you away. As well as I've got a gleaming team behind me, do you know what I mean? So I, I trust them 100 percent what what they say, Joe, Paul, Kevin, that you know in the gym. So what, what, whatever they're telling me, you know, I'm I'm happy with, you know. So I, I don't need to do my own my own my own looking in my eyes. And I've seen, obviously, you're training with Paul Streder, BKB veteran. Talk to me about that relationship. Yeah, we're, we've got a good relationship, brilliant relationship, yeah. Um, got a coach-friend coach, coach relationship, obviously, professional in the gym, friendship outside the gym. Um, you know, just, just like a normal friendship, obviously, in the gym. Um, he's my coach. Obviously, Joey Campbell. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, he's my other... You know, me other coach, me technical coach, he does all my technical work with us. Same again, really good friend of mine. Um, but when we're in the when we're in the gym, um, it's just you know, just coach friend relationship and Kev, uh, the other coach. It's just, just the same, really. Like got a really good bunch of people around us. You know that really care and you know, given my background of what what I've come from, you know, the the very very supportive. Um, Maybe different to some other people. I don't know. Different other teams. You know what I mean. I've got a real strong bond with, with, with my team, which I, for me, uh, I don't know for other people is massively important. You know, and I've got to trust who, who I've got around us. You, you know what I mean. Um, and I certainly do uh, on on all fronts. So, yeah. And what advice has Streder given you? He's he's been in there. He's fought some of the top lads in the sport. What advice has he given you about your transition to to BKBTM? Um, obviously he passes his knowledge down to us. Um, you know stuff I'd, I'd, I'd I'm not going to say it all out loud, <laughs> but good knowledge, yeah. <laughs> Has he has he spoken to you about the brand? You know what to expect when you when you when you jump on the card, anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he sees like you know the size of the event um, and stuff like that, which is, you know, this is the thing that this is going to be the step up for me, the level of the 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 prestige of the event. You know what I mean? It, you know, the the location, um, you know, the the people that I'm going to be around. You know, they're not just you know they're not average fighters anymore. Do, do you know what I mean? With you know top level athletes, we're talking now. You know, UFC stars. You know, you could Jimmy Sweeney, um, he, he's fighting on the card, and that's why I'm, I wonder, you know, you, you know what I mean? Lafferty, he's fighting out, which I, I can't wait to meet him. You know, Scott McHugh will be there, I've got no doubt he'll be watching, won't he? He's not fighting, no, uh, Scott. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting all the, you know, they're the, you know, they're the names in the sport, they're the fights I want. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're the fights you need to be having, you know, you know not just. Not just your smaller end anymore. Do you know what I mean? That you've got to be looking. You've got to be looking up there. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pointless doing it. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I I well, listen, man. I'm super excited uh, for this debut. I'll give you the floor finally. Just anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to sort of shout out before we finish up this interview. Yeah, just like to say up until now, like I'm so thankful for my sponsors, um, Freer Properties, me, me and mine, Ross Freer for. Been the main sponsor of my camp, he's, you know, he's provided us with some with stuff that's been absolutely um, paramount to me training. And um, County Electrical, um, they have, they have another main sponsor, uh, Isla Cottage, and Laura Campbell for doing uh, all my meal preps and stuff. Because fucking hell, yeah, they're absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. It's not even like dieting. Uh, and Joey, uh, I'd like to say a thank you for the hours that he's putting in with us. Paul Strader and, and Kev for the amount of work that they are putting in as well. And I can't wait to face on BKV 25. Thank you. I can't wait as well. I look forward to seeing you on Fight Night and the best of luck. Thank you very much. Cheers, Miss. Thanks.